Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Chrissy and I am the owner of Sugar and Spice Glitter Co. And in today's video, we're gonna be learning all about this brand new product, brand new to me, and it is a really awesome DTF sublimation hack. Now, if you've been following me for a while, either here or on my social media, then you guys know that I have really been diving and dipping my fingertips into sublimation. I even have a few videos here on my channel that you guys can check out if you want to learn more about sublimation tumblers or sublimating on t-shirts. Now, if you have been already learning all about sublimation, then you guys know that when it comes to t-shirts, 100% polyester is going to be the way to, for you to go in order for you guys to do sublimation. So this product right here that we're going to be working on is actually going to allow us to use our sublimation printer on 100% cotton shirts. I want to say a huge thank you to Yay Nation for sending me this product because I'm really excited to share it with you guys. I think it is a really awesome hack, especially for those of us who love the feel of cotton shirts but want to be able to utilize our sublimation printer for all kinds of materials. Now this product you can find on Amazon and I was so grateful to receive a discount code for you guys. So you can check out all of the links and the discount code in the description down below. So let's go ahead and jump into the nitty gritty of this video because I have a lot of tips for you. So the product that I received to test out for you guys is this kit right here. And in this kit is a DTF powder and I'm opening it up so I can show you guys, but it's a DTF powder with eight ounces of powder in here and let me tell you guys you don't need a lot of powder to use with these transfers so this bag right here is going to last you a long time especially if you're just getting started and not making a lot of t-shirts but along with the powder that came in this kit is a little instructional sheet which I will read with you guys so that you know what we're kind of diving into today and then we also have the DTF transfer sheets so the DTF transfer sheets that they sent to me in this kit is actually the eight and a half by 11. They do sell other sizes individually. They have the eight and a half by 11. They also have a roll size 13 inches by 33 feet. If you have a sublimation printer, which roll with roll cap capabilities, then you can use the roll also. And then they also have a bigger size, which is your 13 by 19. Now, if you're like me and you like to do full size, um, designs on your t-shirts and you are going to need some bigger sheets but for today's video I'm going to be using what I have which is what they sent me which is your standard size like printer paper um, so we have the transfer film that is in here and I'm not going to lie I use up quite a bit trying to figure out this process but like I said I have a lot of tips for you guys because a lot of the research that I did and even some of the stuff that came on the instruction sheet actually ended up not working for me. So I'm going to share with you guys what's working for me. That way, if some of the other stuff that you've been reading on or learning about is still not working for you, maybe I have some tips that will help you out. So the transfer sheet is a really, really thin film. It is very, very like translucent. It's not clear but there are two sides to it. One of the first things is that you really need to keep an eye on your print side because when they send you this, it's gonna share, it's gonna show you where your print side is. So when you're removing your film from the packet, the front side that's facing you is gonna be the print size. Now they do say in the instruction sheet that the matte side of the sheet is going to be your printing side and the glossy side of the sheet is gonna be the back side. However, physically looking at the transfer sheet, it is very, very hard to tell what side is which. So you really wanna make sure that you are keeping a conscious look at how you are putting your film in your printer. Now, my printer is the Epson ET5850. ET um, and I'm going to share with you guys like all the features and the printing stuff on how I was able to get a perfect print. In the beginning, I had a lot of issues with smearing because I was not using the correct 
printer settings. Now I watched a video and I forgot who it was that I watched, but she said that she was able to get the perfect print settings using glossy paper. And for me, it was a whole hot smeared mess. We'll insert a video so that you guys can see that. So for me, I set my printer on lightweight paper and that ended up being the best because I use glossy setting, matte setting, um, luster setting, all the settings. And it wasn't until I did the lightweight paper that it really ended up working the best for me and just giving me like the right amount of ink so that it wouldn't smear all over the film and mess up my printer. I was really concerned that I was going to have a whole ink mess when I started printing out on these films and the ink was smearing. And you know, we don't need that. We have expensive stuff. We have expensive ink. And the last thing we need is to have a whole mess on inside of our printer. So I wanted to share with you guys like my experience, the good and the bad, because I'm gonna sit down and give you a product review and I don't wanna glorify the product if there are certain things that didn't work and I had to kind of play around to find out what did work. So you guys are gonna hear what worked for me, what didn't work for me. We're gonna navigate this together. And I'm really excited though, because I think that this is a really cool product and Again, if you're doing sublimation, but you want more options like sublimating on cotton shirts, then this is going to be a, a cool hack. But there is a learning process to this. Like it's going to take a lot of trial and error to figure out what's working best for you. So you may end up going through a few films before you figure out the best setting. I actually went through like six sheets. And so it was kind of like ah, whenever I had to throw away a sheet, but we finally got it and I'm really excited to share. So let's go ahead and dive in and get started. I know I feel like I'm talking a lot, but this is a review video and I really want you guys to kind of understand the whole entire process. So I guess before we dive into the actual physical pressing of the shirts, I'm gonna share with you like the instructions, what it says on the paper, and then I'll show you guys the actual physical printing and pressing. All right, so the DTF instructions for use says determine which side is for printing, and we already spoke about that. The film has a matte side and a glossy side. I explained to you it's really hard to determine between the two sides, and then you will need to print your chosen side onto the matte side. So if you by any chance happen to put your film in the printer, the opposite side, it's not going to work. So just keep that in mind. You're going to, after you have printed out your image on the film you're going to need a box or a bin of some kind to be able to sprinkle this powder on to your sheet and i'm going to show you guys the exact process of what i mean because i videoed everything the whole process from printing out the sheets adding the powder heating it up on the heat press so once you've applied the powder to your film you're going to make sure your image is coated all the way and then you are going to take that and you're going to put it either in an oven if you have an oven made specifically for crafting and if you don't have an oven you're going to use your heat press now the instructions that it says here for the oven is that you should put your film in the oven with a temperature range of 266 to 284. So in my head, I said, okay, I'm gonna put it in my heat press. I'm going to hover over the image to heat it up. So let me start at the temperature that they have suggested. And that was just way too light. I ended up having to put the degrees up to 400 degrees. You'll see that later on and hover it and turn the image around to be able to really get that powder to melt because that powder is going to melt onto the image and that is what's going to allow your image to um, press onto the shirt okay so i'm going to show you the process i'll talk more about it but basically after you've done that and you've melted the powder onto the the <laughs> design and I know it sounds like a lot but bear with me once you've done that then you are going to press it onto your shirt for 10 to 15 seconds you're going to remove the shirt from the press but you are not going to peel right away you are going to let it cool down this is a cold peel we're going to let it cool down and we are going to slowly peel the top off all right so let's go ahead I wanted to just explain that to you and then 
I'll talk through all of my trial and error stuff as we dive into the actual process. So let's get started. As I stated earlier in this video, I started off with the temperature being around 306, which is the recommended temperature on the instructional sheet, but that ended up being a little bit too light for me. So I upped my temperature to 400 and that really ended up working great. Now, because I do have a clamshell press, I had to turn the sheet around to get even heated temperature to be able to get that powder to really melt. You'll see that a little bit later on. But one other thing I wanted to point out is that I initially had the film printing from the bottom uh, compartment of my printer, but I was getting a lot of smears. Um, I shared that to you earlier in the video as well. So I ended up putting the film on the top of my sheet. I thought, you know, it's probably has less movement coming straight from the top of my printer so let's put the film straight up in my printer from the top and see if that works and that ended up being the best thing that i could have done so do keep in mind that if you have a printer that only allows you to print from the bottom compartment you may have some smearing and maybe that is the issue for me being able to just put the film on the top through the top of the printer that really ended up helping a lot when it came to printing out my film so once your design is all printed out it is time to add the powder so i'm going to move over to the table and i'm going to show you guys how to apply the powder on top of the design so once you have your design again we're going to go and you're going to have like a little bin or something i had like this cardboard box that i was like you know what this could work you can see i already have powder in there from um, some of my practices but i'm just going to go ahead and take that envelope of powder and i'm just going to sprinkle it all over the film and the design now once i got enough powder to cover the entire image i'm going to just pick up that film and i'm going to make sure that the entire image is covered with this powder you want to see that all of the powder has coated that design and it'll be quite noticeable because your design on the back will be frosted you want to make sure you dust off all of that excess powder you don't want any powder on there so just dust it off but wherever there isn't the actual design it will just come right off now that we're done with that part i've already placed my design into my press all right i'm gonna hover over because i have a clamshell press and so it's a little bit difficult to heat it all the way around but you can see how i'm just holding it and i'm looking through to make sure that i don't actually touch the design with the heat press because then that powder is going to get stuck to your heat press so just be very careful make sure you are keeping a close eye on how that powder is melting on there now for this design i didn't give you guys a close-up look but i'm going to be doing a second shirt and we're going to give you a close-up at how the powder actually melts so you'll be able to see when you initially put that powder on the design it's like a white frosted but once it melts you can see the vibrancy of the colors showing through and that's how you know that the powder is nicely melted and fused onto that design. Once the powder is completely fused to the design, I'm going to put that to the side and I'm going to readjust my temperature down from 400 to 365 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm putting the temperature down because you don't want the temperature to be too hot. Make sure you are looking at the instruction on the sheet that comes with the kit. In my opinion, the temperature was just a little bit too low, so I set it to 365 and that ended up working well for me. I also am going to press this with firm pressure for 15 seconds second so once i've preheated my shirt i'm going to align my design with the shirt and then we're going to go ahead and press it on firm pressure for 15 seconds Now, I don't have a lot of table space, so I readjusted the camera so you guys can see me pulling up the design. And I went ahead and laid it on the floor so that it can cool down completely. Don't forget that this is a cold peel process, so you want to make sure that your design has cooled down all the way. I felt like placing it on the floor really helped speed up that process. So once the film is nicely cooled down, you're going to go ahead and pull that film down at an angle very slowly and 
once you're done that is basically it this is what the de design looks like on the shirt it is very soft as you can see it is nice and vibrant and very stretchy now i'm going to show you guys how to do the same exact process on a white shirt and with this design it is a lighter color so i wanted to give you guys a different perspective so one with a dark design and one with a lighter color design so i went ahead and i printed out this design that i got from creative fabrica by the way both of these designs i got from creative fabrica this one says this mama praise and as you can see the colors are very light but i went ahead and placed my design in the bin and i'm going to open up that powder and we're going to shake it and spread it all over the design so that we can coat it and just continue to do the same process now with this design i'm going to give you guys a closer look at how i am able to melt this powder in the first clip with the lash t-shirt that i did i gave you guys a kind of like a farther away look but this is going to be a close-up look in the heat press so i also wanted to point out if you can see the very first um, layer of powder there's still some places on the design that didn't get coated um, completely so i'm just going to go ahead and scoop up that powder and just make sure that the design is completely coated any areas that may be missing some powder like here on the right you can see um, that there was missing a little bit of powder it will not stick to the shirt so you want to make sure that your design is completely coated so just make sure that you have um, everything coated <laughs> again I keep saying everything coated coated but yeah you just want to make sure that everything is coated 100% before you go ahead and put it in the heat press so now that we got it nicely coated you can see it's frosted and ready to go so let's move over to the heat press and get this melted on okay so we're gonna go ahead and place that design on the heat press and i'm going to hold it and hover over the design like i showed you before this is a close-up look of what that looks like and so you can see the frostiness of that powder and then in just a minute i'm going to show you guys what it looks like once it starts to melt so you know the difference between ready and not ready so right now it's not ready the powder is still white and now i'm going to show you what it looks like once it starts to fuse to the design so here you can see the color starting to show through the frostiness of the powder i'm going to just move around the design so that we get heat evenly distributed around the film uh, because my press is a clam press it's a little bit harder to get that heat evenly distributed um, when it's not flat so yeah just keep that in mind that you might want to move your film around all right so now we're going to go ahead and press this design onto the t-shirt so i have a white t-shirt and i went ahead and put it on my press and I'm going to just use that design the same way we did the other shirt so just I'm going to center it on my shirt I have my press set at 365 degrees we're going to go ahead and press it for 15 seconds on firm pressure then we're going to move it down to the floor and remove the film once the shirt and the design has completely cooled down so once we're ready, I'm going to go ahead and take that film, lift it up by the corner, and just slowly remove that away from the design on the shirt. This video is sped up so you can see just how slow I'm taking it, but I love how this one turned out. I love the colors, how soft it is. Let me know what you think. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you can see, I am wearing one of the shirts we created today, and I think that they all turned out really awesome. I love how soft they feel. It really does not feel like there's much on there and I really do like that you guys and I hope you enjoyed this video let me know in the comment section down below what you thought about this product if you've used this product before it may be something I went through helped you out helped you navigate any issues you were having I definitely want to hear about it in the comment section down below I do want to do a follow-up video on how it lasts after a few wears and washes so if you're curious about that in the future let me know in the comment section so I know to keep it 
an eye on it so I can update you guys. I'll either do an update here on YouTube or on my other social media platforms. So if you're not following me on Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok, you can find the links in the description or just search Sugar and Spice Glitter Co. I wanted to also invite you guys to join my exclusive group where I do a bunch of exclusive tutorials every month, challenges, discount codes to my website and more. So if you want to come so if you want to become a SAS exclusive member and have access to my tutorials and more, check out the links in the description as well. I'll talk to you guys next week. Love ya. Mwah.